If you have a Honda with a set of Comstar wheels on it and you're using a digital speedometer like I am, I have a product for you. Aluminum speedometer drive delete to get rid of a bulky stock cable unit. So stick around, I'll tell you all about it. Alright everybody, on the table here I have a series of Honda Comstar specific speedometer drives. So. These units, uh, they're functional if you have a stock bike, cool, whatever, but for those of us who might have aftermarket gauges on them that are digitally driven, there really is no need for this thing. So when you have stock forks and a digital speedometer, this can look kind of bulky on your stock forks. So the solution that I've come up with is an aluminum speedometer drive delete. Now this works on numerous Comstar equipped bikes, basically anything with like a 15 millimeter axle from what I've found. So this covers a uh, pretty wide range of bikes, anything from like your the, the very first year CX500s to your CBXs to even like a GL1100 Goldwing, your GL650s, even some VF models. So on my website, I actually have a link and I have a, a list of compatible bikes that I have found. But if you're interested in this item and you're unsure if it's gonna fit, definitely contact me. And uh, worst case scenario, I'll send you one. And if it doesn't work, I'll refund you your money. So no big deal. Now the way I sell this kit is a speedometer drive delete, a single piece here, and then I have a spacer. And this you may need, you may not need. Typically what I've seen is this type of drive unit as compared to this one needs the extra spacer. Now to demonstrate the installation, I'm, I'm gonna use the uh, CX500 Scrambler build here. If you guys are unfamiliar, I have a lot of videos on it. I'll link a playlist above right now. But for now, let's dive right into it and uh, swap this thing out. Now step one, of course, you want to get the front of your bike suspended in the air. All right, we have the weight off the front tire here, so I can go ahead and remove the axle after I pull the caliper off. Go ahead and remove your caliper. If you have a pinch bolt over here, go ahead and loosen it. Take this thing all the way out. Go ahead. Start moving your axle. Now for ease of demonstration, I went ahead and just removed the wheel fully. You may not have to do this though. Here's our stock drive unit. And within, there's a series of two tangs right here along with the seal. Now in some instances I've seen, you can actually keep that little tang in there. Sometimes you have to get rid of them. So you wanna go ahead and test fit first. And you'll know if it sits down flush, it needs to be touching the inner spacer, the inner bearing right there. And this one does not. This is a real easy fix. And carefully pry out your wheel seal. Then you can remove the little drive unit, clean the area up, put it back in. Good opportunity to go ahead and clean your seal up and then reapply some fresh grease. All right, now we have our seal cleaned. And go ahead and reinstall.
All right, now the important part. We have the drive unit that came out of here, and we have the drive delete. So we want to compare the height here. If you have a set of calipers, go ahead and use those because you have them. But these here, they are the same exact height. Now, you can see the style of this one. Externally, looks similar to this one, right? Wrong. They have a different height. So that's what you have to pay attention to. Like your CX500 one is also short. Now, if we had, if we had this unit here, if we had a tall one, like some of you may, that is what the spacer is for. Go ahead and put that on top. Reconfirm the height. This is 2.5 millimeter thick, and it should be exactly what you need. So go ahead and put the drive on. The spacer always goes on this side, does not go on here. So this towards the fork. Go ahead and put that on, but for now, we got lucky, we don't need the spacer. We can go ahead and install this and be done. And go ahead and press down while you're doing it. You can feel, you can feel it contacting the actual wheel bearing. So we are home and we're ready to go. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the wheel. And again, it may not be necessary to actually remove the wheel on your bike, but this works for me for a demonstration. Make sure you tighten this back here. Reinsert whatever pinch bolts you might have. Be sure to tighten the spec. Now, if you do end up taking your caliper off, don't let it hang just by the line. You wanna go ahead and support it with like a zip tie or a bungee cord, something. You want to make sure you relieve any kind of stress on here, but we're still building this bike. And done. There you have it, we went from a stock, kind of bulky, ugly speedometer drive that we do not need to a nice, clean, just aesthetically pleasing piece. So if you guys have any questions, leave them below. And if you want to pick something like this up, go ahead and hit my website. All the links are in the description. And if you guys are unfamiliar with this bike or any of the other builds that I have on the channel, go ahead and take a look around. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.